So question one, how does Apex access objects if we don't do any explicit grants? The way to explain that is first to take a slight backward step and hopefully explain what most people are already familiar with, but we'll just fly through it. And that is a package called DBMS SQL. Back in the day when I was a, a young Oracle developer, this was the only way you could do dynamic SQL in the database. This was before the advent of Execute Immediate, which obviously made a lot of this much easier. But DBMS SQL was effectively like an API layer into what I would call the low level SQL processing mechanisms. You would end up coding something like along these lines in the same way that the way an SQL is processed under the covers when you run it, what we do is the first thing is we open a cursor to get access to an area of memory in which we can do our processing. And then we would parse our SQL. And that way we would actually check the SQL for its syntactic validity, its semantic validity, check all the privileges, etc. We might bind some variables and define some result columns such that the database knows what the data types of the bind variables are and what those values are. Then we would execute the cursor and then if it was an SQL statement, sorry, a select statement, and we needed to do things like get rows back, we would then fetch rows, return them into variables, and continue on in an iterative process. And when we're all done, we would close the cursor. So that's actually what happens whenever you do any kind of SQL in the database, but DBMS SQL is the means of exposing that to do dynamic SQL in earlier versions of Oracle. Now, why am I talking about that? There is a package very closely related to DBMS SQL called dbms sys underscore sql and it works almost identically in fact all the calls you can see there on screen pretty much have partnering versions in dbms sys sql the key difference is if we look at the parsing step when it comes to dbms sql sorry dbms sys sql before i talk about dbms sys sql the parameters that go into a parse command are the cursor i'm trying to parse the SQL I'm trying to parse to check for it, and some information about how, what version of parsing I should be using. DBMS SysSQL is the same API, but it has this routine called parse as user. And therefore it takes a fourth parameter, which is the user ID as which you would be running this SQL as. That sounds like an incredibly sort of lax means of security. I can log on as, a, as some user, and yet I can run and parse and execute SQLs as some other user without ever knowing their credentials or their, their privileges. And you're dead right. This is something that you should never, ever give to anyone. DBMS SysSQL is owned by Sys. It's not granted really need to anyone, and it's not even documented. This is something that simply is done for Apex and particular internal Oracle applications to get access to things to parse them as nominated users. In this case, in Apex, the user's bound to the schema's bound to particular workspaces. So even though I've told you about this in order to answer the question, fairly obvious caveat here, be really careful, right? You just because you've seen this package called DBMS SysSQL, please don't jump in and say, hey, that's really cool. I'll go grab that to everyone. Okay, so you know, etc. That's a really bad idea. This is something that's used internally by Apex, and hopefully that uh, answers that question for you, Dennis, in the sense that no, you should not be using this outside the um, Oracle sphere. And what do I mean? Grant it to nobody. Right. Rest assured, I, yeah, you know about it now. It's used by Apex. It's used by other things inside the database. But please, don't go around using this. Don't grant it to anyone. It's owned by SysDBA for a reason. Mm -hmm.